do you love Allah? Wait, hold on, don't answer that. What does it even mean to love Allah? What do you understand when you say, I love Allah? If we look at the linguistic meaning of love in the English language, we can learn a lot from what it truly means to love one thing or one being. Love can be translated in Webster's Dictionary as to have a passionate affection, profound tenderness, strong liking, complete contentment, absolute reliance between someone or something. SubhanAllah, when you think about it, the English language cannot define what love is. So how is it that we are so ready to say we love Allah? Great men like Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu Umar al-Khattab radiyallahu an, Uthman ibn Affan radiyallahu an, and Ali ibn Abi Talib radiyallahu an. All these great men, these people had, they had the love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How is it so that Abu Bakr as the Amir, as the head of a state, Amir al-Mu'mineen, my dear brothers and sisters, how is it that he would travel every day? He would travel every day after Fajr to a blind elderly woman's house and clean her house and prepare her children tend to her animals, and yet she didn't even, she didn't even know who he, who he was, who this man was, what this man did. All she knew was that a man came and provided for her. How is it, if not for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what else did, did Abu Bakr do it for? Did he do it for money? He was one of the richest. Did he do it for status, prestige? He was Amir al-Mu'mineen, the head of a state. So my dear brothers and sisters, such was the love that Abu Bakr radiallahu an had for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What about Umar al-Khattab radiallahu an? What about him? He was on his way to kill the Prophet salam, and instead he accepted Islam and his love for Allah azza wa and his deen was so great that while all the other Muslims, all the other Muslims were hiding their Islam, he was ready to proclaim his Islam. He was ready to tell everyone about his, this new ni'mah, this new rahmah that Allah azza wa bestowed upon him. Such was the love that he had with Allah Azza wa Jal. What about Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu arda? What about him when he was asked to give? When he gave, he gave from the best of what we had. Imagine, imagine, when we give, we give things that we don't use. We give second-hand items. We give the extra money that we don't need. So on and so forth. Uthman ibn Affan, he gave the best of what he had in all of what he had or as much as he could. When the Prophet ﷺ asked for military uh, equipment for a battle, Uthman ibn Affan, he didn't give used items. He gave what we would be an equivalent of today, fully loaded Humvees. He brought the best camels. He brought the best shields and swords. Imagine the cost he took on, upon himself to provide this for the Muslims. Such was the love. If he didn't do it for the love of Allah Azza wa Jal, as we said before, if it wasn't for the love of Allah, what was it for? Did he need to become popular? No. His status was there. His wealth was there. He had everything he needed. He only desired Allah Azza wa Jal. He desired to have a relationship with Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. Such was the love that he had for him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters in Islam, how much does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do for us? He created us. He gave us life. He gave us good health. He gave us wealth. He gave us children. He gave us, gave us wives and spouses. He gave us beautiful homes to live in. He promises for us an eternal paradise. He will elevate our status and let us look at his face on the day of judgment. How does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love us so much. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Wallahi, indeed Allah loves us and loves, loves people far more than a mother who has lost her child when she finds her child back. Imagine when a mother who's lost her child finds the child for the first time, how much does she love the child, subhanallah. It is for this reason why Sufyana Thawri, rahimallah, used to say, Wallahi, I would rather have Allah as my judge on the day of judgment rather than my own parents. Why? Because I know Allah loves me more than my own parents. Allahu Akbar. My brothers and my sisters in Islam, 
How much does Allah love us? It's shown by the fact that even when we disobey Him, He still feeds us, He still clothes us, He still lets us breathe by Allah. He still provides for us and nourishes us and sustains us. Even whilst we're disobeying Him by Allah, even when we're committing that sin, Allah is still letting us breathe, Allah is still letting us eat our food. Ya Salam. How great and how noble and how merciful is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an, what do you think allowed him to, to spend the entire night in salah, the entire night in ibadah of Allah azza wa jal? The Sahaba said that they left him after Isha in Ruku' and they came before Fajr and they found him in Ruku' except there was one difference. There was one difference, that his beard was soaked. His beard was soaked and there was a puddle beneath him. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, what gave him the happiness to do that, to pray all night? He was one of the 10 promised Jannah, my dear brothers. One of the 10 promised Jannah. Yet he worked like he was, like he was promised Jahannam. Like he was promised Jahannam. As if he, were, he was going to hellfire, that's how hard he worked because his desire, his love to be with Allah, even though he was promised Jannah, pushed him to work as hard. Such was the genuine love that Ali ibn Abi Talib had. Wallahi, the scholars of Islam say, the tears of a believer are more precious than the Kaabans. Hakada qala shawkani. As shawkani rahimullah says, the tears of a believer are more precious to Allah azawajal than indeed the Kaaba itself. Have you not heard, Shawkani says, the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that indeed seven people will be given shade on the day of judgment. And one of those people to be given shade on the day of judgment will be a man who remembers Allah and out of fear and love for Allah, his eyes tear, wallahi. And so he says, wallahi, the tears are more beloved to Allah than the, than the Kaaba by Allah. What about people like Ahmed ibn Hanbal? Ahmed bin Hanbal, the love he had, Ya Allah, is just humbling. This is a man. We can claim those were Sahaba. This is a man, a knowledgeable man, you like you and me. When he was arrested once, the punishment for him was 100 lashes. 100 lashes on the great Imam, Rahimahullah. So when they executed this punishment, it was executed in public and the, the people saw it and his students saw it. So the executor, he began to whip. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. 100 lashes. And in between those, those lashes, he passed out. When he regained consciousness, he found that his students had gathered around him in his house. And you know the first question he asked, after being whipped and everything, he said, did you guys pray Asr? Did you pray Asr? And his students replied, yes. So he said, then make wudu for me so I can pray the Asr. So they made wudu and he prayed Asr. And then after the Salah, his students were around him and they asked him a question. They asked him, oh Shaykh, oh our Shaykh, when the whipper was whipping you, we were crying out of the pain that you were going through, yet you were smiling. You were smiling. Why? So the Imam, Rahimahullah, he said, he said, you guys were looking at the hand of the whipper. He said, but I was looking at the hand of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Ya Allah. If it wasn't for the love that he had for Allah Azza wa Jal, how else would he think the way he thought in his punishment? Put yourselves in, in the shoes of these great men, in these situations, and then ask yourself, would you have reacted the same? Would you have done the same? Would you have thought the same? And ultimately, ultimately, ask yourself, do you love Allah? أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني 
فاتبعوني يحببكم الله ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم والله غفور رحيم 